The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. We're going to begin in just a quick moment. So as more people sign on for today's webinar, so just hold on tight. All right, we're going to go ahead and begin, and I wanted to be to welcome everybody to today's webinar. I'm Lee Kessler, and uh, every month here we release updates and fixes into the Chariot Engine software, which we present in our release notes. And we alert you to, to the release notes and some of the most interesting updates on the splash page when you log in. If you're looking at the screen on the top left, you'll see a version of what that looks like, and it's probably how you signed up for this webinar. Uh, in this very quick presentation today, I'm just going to walk you through the top five coolest new features and updates in Charity Engine's Frogger and Gallagher releases. Now, if those names sound familiar, it's because we internally name each of our release cycles after famous arcade games. That's what happens when you work with developers. So if you have questions about these five or any of the new releases, feel free to ask them during the questions button, using the questions button in the GoToWebinar menu. Uh, I'll go through the five and then we'll get to the questions about these or any of the new features when we're done. So um, the release date was 4-16-15, uh, April 16th for Frogger and Galaga. And the top five we're going to be discussing today, which you may have noticed, are the ability to upload photos to display on a contact record. Uh, the fact that Secure Force Connection and ADA compliance are now default selections when making a, a form. Uh, the third is searching by ID or name will now default the data data range filter, uh, sorry, the date range filter to all. And uh, that may seem confusing, but I'll show you what I mean and I think you'll appreciate it. Um, uh, we've cleaned up the order of fields for add a new person and I think you'll see some of the benefit there. And lastly, we've added a pop-up countdown during session inactivity, which is a security feature, but also a user benefit feature. So as we go through here, let's start um, with what we have here. Now, just explaining monthly releases of features and bug fixes. Uh, every month, as I said, we release updates and fixes into the software. You can access these notes in the footer of any Charity Engine screen you're on. If you notice the green circle on top, it says CE version 416-2015. Uh, if you go to that, that will show you where to see this the most recent uh, features. Uh, and you can also look historically at the others, which you can see in the screen below with the second green circle where it says Galaga 2015. That's a drop down that will show you any of the previous releases. Uh, now, we're a SaaS product, which means we're software as a solution or software as a service. And we update your software via the cloud without forcing you to do a download or a restart, which you might connect with previous experiences using software. Um, and again, you can see the, the releases uh, by searching there. So here are some of the cool ones we think uh, we put out this month. The first one is one people constantly talk about, and I think is really cool, is the ability to upload photos to a contact record. Uh, so you'll see the, the image on top, my record, uh, and I have an image in there. Uh, and that way, it's just a great way to associate a face with a person. Um, when, you're, when, you're, when people get more familiar with your donors, it's nice if you have a picture that they know the face. So you can upload custom avatars on the contact summary tape for, tab for both people and company types of contacts, the organization contacts. So uh, if you had an organization there, like BIS Global, you could also upload a company logo or something. Uh, and to do that's very, very simple. Um, on this image below, you see what it looked like before I inserted my image. Uh, and there's a blue text that says upload image. So on the contact record, you just click upload image. You choose the file from your, your desktop computer, your PC, uh, or your laptop. And then you click upload, and that will put the uh, image directly in there. So great little feature. Um, currently, you can't do it outside the system, so no one can upload their own picture, but that will be coming. But the good news is now you can associate images with people in your contact record. And, of course, you can always upload other pictures uh, in the um, uh, 
in the in the contact record where it says files. Um, you can upload images, so maybe you have a picture of yourself with a donor at a uh, at a uh, an event, and you wanted to make sure you had that in your record. You can upload that picture and have that as avail available as well. So the second cool feature we came out with is secure force connection and ADA compliance are now default selections when you create a form. So if you look at the right on the, the image on the right, you'll see that's what it looks like when you create a new form if you've ever done that. And you'll notice in the green circle, we've highlighted force secure connection and ADA compliant render mode. Those are default, which means anytime you create it, if you don't select those, they will automatically be created with those criteria. Now, what are they? For secure connection is essentially just creating an encryption when you uh, on, on this form. So that way, when people submit information to our server, it is encrypted automatically. And it's a higher level of security. It's an important level of, of security. Um, and what it does, it automatically adds an S to the HTTP. If you ever see that HTTP and HTTPS, HTTPS refers to secure. So um, the address, the, the URL, if it says HTTPS, it's secure. And it means that the server that it's going to, the other computer where the transaction is taking place, has been identified as a secure server that you can trust. Um, this is important for payments or sensitive personal data. It's less important if you just have a contact form or a volunteer sign-up form where the information about a person is not as necessarily secure. But nevertheless, it's in here. Uh, we're showing you that we can do this, and it's important. So unless you have a particular reason why you wouldn't want to make a, a form secure, just letting you know that is automatically secure in these forms now. The second feature here is that ADA compliant render mode is also a default. And ADA compliance it, render mode provides individuals with disabilities an equal opportunity to access websites in accordance with the American Disabilities Act. So by virtue of this button being selected, your forms will comply in relation to the functions provided by the forms. There are things that um, ADA would require in a website um, that aren't part of our forms pages. So we're not adhering to it, it's not necessary, but everything that we do need to do is being taken care of in this form. And what it allows is, uh, for instance, if someone who um, uh, does not have sight has a computer that can read aloud text, um, a program that can read aloud text, this means we're automatically creating a form that ensures that they will be able to uh, hear the text on there. So little things like that. If you want to know a little bit more about ADA compliance for websites, uh, I found this website and I think it's a great ex explainer. It's um, techrepublic.com forward slash blog forward slash web dash designer forward slash creating dash n dash ADA dash compliant dash website. A little bit long, but uh, if you want to email me, lee.kessler at charityengine.net, I'm happy to send that to you as well, as well as this entire document. Um, but it's a good place to go to truly understand what ADA compliance uh, requires. The third new feature that you're in, you might be interested in is that uh, searching by ID or name will now default the date range filter to all. Um, so if you look at the image on the right, you'll see this is a traditional uh, search. When you're, um, in this case, I'm looking for a search for a form. Maybe it'd be a contact record. Um, in the top circle, you'll see it says name professional services. So I'm looking for a form where somewhere in the title is professional services. I could also search on the bottom left. You see ID where it would, uh, if I knew the ID number for the form or a contacts ID, I could type that in there as well to search. What we've done here now is the image on the right, and it's sort of the, the circle on the, the third circle on the right, where it says dates all. Now, when you search for a particular form by name or ID number, it will automatically search all. And the benefit there is that if you if you know the system well, you know that dates give you a lot of searchable ranges: last week, last month, uh, quarter to date, and so forth. Um, and what would happen is before, if you went to search for something, 
uh, a, prof a particular name or a particular ID, unless you changed it to all, it wouldn't know to look outside the range that was selected. In this case, um, it will automatically do that for these particular searches. So you don't have to go through a second step. It wasn't a huge problem, but a slight inconvenience and something that users told us they uh, would like fixed and we were able to do that for them. Um, the question is why aren't things always defaulted to all and I'll explain it. It's because uh, in the case of, for example, contacts, some of our clients might have a few million records. To search all of them takes an incredible amount of time and puts an incredible amount of pressure on the, uh, on the system and it's time that you waste. So we allow you to look more specifically and the default is usually more specific. Are you looking for last week, last quarter, last year or so forth before you actually search all? But in this case, when you're looking for one specific thing, uh, it makes it easier and it makes more sense to just search all. So that's a little convenience thing that we've added in, uh, in this particular release. Uh, small little change here, but we cleaned up the order of fields for adding a new person. You'll notice organization is now on top. We put the most relevant information on top uh, so that you're asking yourself when you fill out a form. Um, Small little change, but just something we, we noticed people were asking us for, um, that organization be the first thing they enter about a person, so it's easier to search for when they look at the record. And then here's a great new feature, too, and this is a security feature. It's a pop-up countdown during session inactivity. Uh, Charity Engine is built that for security purposes, after 15 minutes, uh, or you can actually set that time, but we usually make it about 15 minutes of inactivity, the user session times out and re-login is required. And that's so if you're on a page and you're looking at donor information, you walk away, um, after 15 minutes it'll cut you out, and that way, it, again, it's a security feature so no one can come along and, uh, and get into your, your system. Um, now, one of the great uh, things we've added here is a notification pop-up that warns you and provides a two-minute countdown that you're approaching your session timeout. So that way, let's say you're sitting on, the, you're doing work on your computer, you're entering a lot of batch entries, and somebody calls you and you get distracted, and all of a sudden it's a 13-minute call. Well, this will pop up and say, hey, just a reminder, we're about to expire, do you want to stay logged in? And that'll give you the chance to do that. Um, you won't lose the, the pertinent information. Um, now, if you do log out, great new feature in Charity Engine is when you log back in, it'll take you directly to the page you drop off of, so you don't have to go through back through the dashboard and find it. Uh, if you're working on a particular page or record, it will keep you on that page. However, if you entered information during that time period, for instance, batch entry of a lot of uh, like credit cards, um, that information, because it wasn't saved or updated, it won't be included. That's why we added the session expiration warning. So it's a reminder that, by the way, if you want to keep this data, you may want to uh, uh, remind us that you're still here. Uh, things like Pandora, if you ever use Pandora, sometimes it'll ask, are you still listening? Uh, same type of feature, um, but it's a great security feature we've added. And lastly, it's just that we've added a bunch of new videos. Um, so if you check out in the, the how-to videos in the Help Center, uh, we've got some new videos. You may have seen them already, but a number of people haven't. Um, and just to let you know, there's an asterisk next to some of them. And the asterisk indicates that the videos are longer form training videos. Um, so instead of being a quick explanation of how to do something, it goes into a little bit more robust explanation of the entire section, what it does, what it means, and how to use it. Uh, those tend to be about 10, maybe 20 minute videos, uh, but great for educating people who might want to know a little bit more about Charity Engine. Just direct them to these videos. And the asterisk, again, means these are the longer form training ones. So that's it for this week. Um, if you have any questions, I'm going to check out our questions, uh, and I'm happy to answer anything uh, you might want to know. Um, but uh, our next release will be May 14th, and that's under code names Hexen and Inferno. So if you're video game fans or arcade fans, you might appreciate those names. I uh, don't know yet what's included in that, but again, we will release them. When you log on on 514, you will see the... Um, the splash page and you can read them and we'll also be doing these webinars following every one of our uh, 
our releases to give you a little bit more insight into some of the cool things and also give you a chance to ask questions about, uh, about some of the things you might have discovered. And again, if there's people you know who might be interested in looking at this document, uh, email me, lee.kessler at charityengine.net, and I'm happy to forward it to you, uh, and you can share it with them uh, so that they can see as well. So no questions it looks like, so I'm assuming everybody got a good sense of what we have here, what you can do. Um, we're always available to answer questions about what came out the new in the new release. And again, these webinars will be taking place uh, on the Monday following every one of our new releases, which is always on a Thursday. And the next one will be Thursday, May 14th. Thanks so much for your use of Charity Engine. We're thrilled to have you as customers, and uh, we want to do everything we can to make your experience uh, as seamless as possible. I hope this helps, and I look forward to seeing you on this and our future uh, webinars, not associated with releases, but uh, just general topic webinars that we're going to be doing more of. Thanks so much, and have a great day.